The richest man in history was from Africa, his story, Mansa Musa. Billionaires Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett are currently the three richest men in the world, according to Bloomberg's Billionaires Index. None of them ever reached the inflation-adjusted net worth of John D. Rockefeller who had amassed the equivalent of around $340 billion by the time he died in 1937. However, one historical figure beats them all. And it is hard to imagine anyone will catch up with him any time soon. People like Augustus Caesar, who personally owned all of Egypt for a period, or Song Dynasty Emperor Shenzong, whose domain at one point accounted for 25 to 30 percent of global GDP. The richest man in history officially remains Mansa Musa I, the tenth Mansa, emperor, of the mighty Empire of Mali, one of the largest, and richest, empires in West African history. His inflation-adjusted wealth at the time was the equivalent of $400 billion. He belonged to the Qatar dynasty and came to power after Abu Bakr Qatar II left on an expedition to explore the Atlantic Ocean, leaving Musa as his deputy and never returned. Musa was the one to inherit his place on the throne and continue ruling the people of Mali. Musa, additionally, had very important roots. His great uncle Sundi Adukata was the founder of the Mali Empire. Musakata I came into power in 1312. At the time, much of Europe was struggling and facing declining gold and silver production, while many African kingdoms were thriving. Under Musa I, the Mali Empire grew to its height, pushing westward along the Niger to encompass the important trading centers of Timbuktu and Jiao. All in all, his empire stretched about 2,000 miles. Mansa Musa was in charge of a lot of land. To put it into perspective, he ruled all, or parts, of modern-day Mauritania, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, and Chad. Immense wealth was gained from acting as a trade hub between the interior and southern coast of West Africa and north of Africa across the Sahara Desert's caravan routes. Salt was a major commodity traded from the north while from the south came gold and ivory. He embarked upon a mission to build mosques and madrasas in his kingdom and the places he brought under his influence. Some of the architectural wonders that came up during his time are the Sankor Madrasa in Timbuktu and the Hall of Audience in his capital, Nyani. The University of Sankor, in Timbuktu became famous, drawing scholars from Africa and the Middle East. A devout Muslim, Musa set out on pilgrimage to Mecca between 1324 and 1325. He was not alone on this 4,000-mile voyage. His procession reportedly included 60,000 men, all wearing brocade and Persian silk, including 12,000 slaves, who each carried 1.8 kilograms, 4 pounds, of gold bars, and heralds dressed in silks, who bore gold staffs, organized horses, and handled bags. Musa provided all necessities for the procession, feeding the entire company of men and animals. Those animals included 80 camels which each carried 23 to 136 kilograms, 50 to 300 pounds, of gold dust. Musa gave the gold to the poor he met along his route. Musa not only gave to the cities he passed on the way to Mecca, including Cairo and Medina, but also traded gold for souvenirs. It was reported that he built a mosque every Friday. When Musa passed through Egypt, so much gold flowed. According to Morgan that it actually devalued the metal and led to a currency crisis that took Egypt 12 years to dig itself out of. After reigning for 25 years, Mansa Musa died in 1337. He was succeeded by his son, Maghan I. The king's rich legacy persisted for generations and to this day, there are mausoleums, libraries, and mosques that stand as a testament to this golden age of Mali's history.